there, my name is Dylan and welcome to my channel. Today's review is going to be Legacy of Dragon Halt by Fantasy Flight Games. Legacy of Dragon Halt is a brand new type of game from Fantasy Flight, but it is essentially sort of a light role-playing choose-your-own-adventure game, similar in style to a Telltale adventure game. To play the game, it's pretty simple. First of all, you have to create a character, but luckily there's a nice create a character guide that's pretty simple. Really, all you're going to be doing is choosing a name, a race, a class, a couple of skills, and then adding any sort of background information you want. Now, most of those aren't that important. Really, the only thing you really have to keep track of is how many skills you add to your character. That will affect your maximum stamina. And stamina is a little bit important in this game. When you take certain actions throughout the game during your choices, it's going to take stamina. Either that means you've gotten hit in battle, or that you wasted some time and so you lose stamina. If your stamina ever drops to zero, then you actually have to disable a skill, mark it on your character sheet, gain one stamina, and then continue play. This can mean over time that if you have a low stamina, eventually you start to lose a lot of the abilities you had before, thus it becomes much harder to actually do things. The rest of the game essentially plays much like a Telltale style adventure game, where characters are going to be reading paragraphs, whether that's a small one or a large one, which are essentially sort of like cutscenes in a Telltale game until they reach sort of a choice point. At that point, players make a choice. Essentially, most of them are going to be around, ask a question here, ask about this, ask about that, go right, go left, get into a fight, don't get into a fight, ignore all your options and go do something else. Very simple sort of light choices like that. There are a few other exceptions to that, but you'll see them as you actually play. If you are playing solo, the game's pretty simple. Essentially, you just go off your character sheet, you make any choice you really want, and play continues. If you are playing with more than one player, then everyone is going to have a little runestone token. These runestone tokens act as sort of turn markers. Now, once players reach a decision point, everyone gets to choose who is going to actually make that decision with their character. Once a player makes a choice, they flip their runestone token over, play continues until everybody has exhausted their runestone token. When that happens, then you will flip all runestone tokens over, play continues, and at the next story point, any player can make that choice. There's a few minor exceptions to that rule, but generally when that rule changes, the quest book is going to tell you exactly when and how that rule has changed. Throughout the game, players are going to be tracking their progress through their own character sheets, marking the items that they receive in card form, the main story sheet where they can mark important decisions that they've made over the course of the game, and the various quest sheets which allows them to track time, progress, any experience, and money as well. For this review, I'm going to sometimes compare this game to The Walking Dead Season 1 from Telltale Games. Uh, keep in mind, I am trying to avoid spoilers for both games, but uh, there might be a few just tiny minor ones. They don't spoil the main story at all or any sort of major events, but there might be some little minor ones. Essentially, in reviewing this game, I decided to ask a few important questions about the game and whether it's good or bad. My first question that I approached is really, does the Legacy of Dragonhold system work? It's a new system from Fantasy Flight, so does it actually work? And really, the answer to that question is pretty simple. Yes, it does work. There's really no sort of complications. It's a very simple and easy system to understand. The Maybe the weakest point of it is sort of the character creation system in that you can very easily, since it's very free form, create sort of a super character who can do just about anything, at least in terms, in the context of this game. Now the second big question, and probably one of the most important, really is, are the choices you make throughout the game actually meaningful? If you were to judge this game solely based upon its first quest, Two New Roads, the answer would be no. Two New Roads is sort of the intro, very basic quest that the game starts with. In it, you talk to a few characters, you get a few dialogue choices, and then some action happens and you get to kind of choose where you go, here or there, but it all ends up at the same exact point. There's really no, there's a few minor differences between the tracks you go, but generally it's just a dialogue difference here and there, but you always end up at the same point. And that's very similar to Walking Dead Season 1, where at the end of the first episode, there was an ex a choice that seemed extremely important. 
in that you chose whether one character or another would die. You had no choice about it. They were both in trouble and you had to save one. And this seemed like a monumental, consequential choice. It would change the rest of the season forever. And as the season came out, turns out, well, it really wasn't that monumental because really all you got was a few different dialogue choices. That's the kind of choice that Legacy of Dragonhold, especially very early on, is going to feel like. Some of these choices feel like they would be monumental and super important, and then they turn out to really not be. That being said, I am not just reviewing this game based on its first quest. I want to look at the entire game. And once you get past that first quest, the game starts to open up a lot more. The Dragonhold Village book, for instance, is immense. There are so many choices there because you're choosing location, you're choosing who to talk to, you're choosing all sorts of little tiny things. But I also have to admit that a lot of the choices you do make are not really that important. They don't move the story in any sort of consequential way, good or bad, for the most part. There are a few, there is one that happens about halfway through the game that is instrumental and if you fail it or choose to do nothing, the ending is going to be vastly different than if you succeed at it. And that's actually really cool. I wish the game was actually full of a lot more of those types of choices and sort of the consequences of your actions in that manner. Unfortunately, it's not. And that's kind of a weak point on this game for me in that the choices you make are very, very minor. So some background information here. Legacy of Dragon Hall takes place in Fantasy Flight's Tyranoff world, which is sort of their generic fantasy world that's created that they use for various games set in sort of the Rune Wars universe. So you've got Rune Wars, Rune Wars miniature game, Descent, and now Legacy of Dragonhold. Generally though, the lore and the story in the background of this Tyranoff world has been uh, extremely lacking, <laughs> to put it bluntly. There's really, it's sort of very, very, very generic. There's, there's goblins, there's orcs, there's elves, and you know, they do all the stuff you expect them to do. There's really no differences here. Now, Legacy of Dragon Hall pushes the lore, I would say, a small bit forward. It's not a drastic step forward, but now you actually have a little bit of world building. And that's where a lot of these choices kind of come in. This is where you're learning about various characters. You're learning the backgrounds of various races and what people believe or, you know, the spirituality and things like that of this world. And that part's pretty good. I do like that it does build upon Tyranoth and make Tyranoth feel a little bit more like a fully fleshed out place. Now, unfortunately, this leads to my last question. Is the story, the world, and all of this actually worth exploring and going into? And unfortunately, my answer to that question would be a little bit more on the negative side. There's a lot of weakness to the overall story in this game. The overall villain isn't very compelling. The plot that kind of follows through the game is not the most interesting. For the most part, you're going to be able to predict or tell what happens, whether you do an event or not, that sort of thing. It's pretty weak. A lot of the characters are somewhat interesting, but they're very shallow. And I'll explain more of that in a bit, but they're not the most fleshed out beings in the world. Also, the world of Tyranoth is somewhat contradictory at times. It's this very happy-go-lucky kind of fantasy realm that's mostly happy. There's not a whole lot of tragedy, but there's a little bit. But even then, most people don't seem drastically affected by it. But then you have some weird sort of tonal shifts where people are still getting their hands cut off for trying to steal things. Now with that, there are actually some really cool exceptions to that point. For instance, one of the very first things you get is a letter from a friend of yours in the game. And that letter has a bunch of typos and stuff, and you're basically, it's a little tiny mini puzzle. And that's really cool. There's also a journal you will acquire later where you get to read sort of a character's inner thoughts. And for the most part, that character is developed pretty darn well. There are also a few characters that you will meet that are actually generally fleshed out relatively well. I just personally found the overall plot and sort of the adventure you go on to not really be of much significance. Meaning that I sat on this review for a little bit and I thought about it and I rewrote parts of it. And at the end, I really came to the conclusion that 
I don't remember a lot of what happened, even going back and reviewing things, because it just doesn't sit with you very much. It 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 goes. You go on this adventure. You have your little adventure and fun, and then it's over, and you don't really remember much from it because a lot of it is relatively generic. Now let's go into some of those characters. Tiranoth is kind of a utopia now. There's openly gay and transgender characters. There's women who can be guards without repercussions or any sort of judgment from male characters or anything like that. This is a very utopian medieval society. Personally, I think that's kind of cool. I'm not bothered by that in the slightest, but I do understand that some people out there probably will be. But one of my major complaints here is that a lot of the characters aren't fully fleshed out. And the reason I say this is because a lot of those gay and transgender characters are sort of just token gay and transgender characters. That's who they are. That's what they're defined by. They're defined by their gayness or their transgenderness, and they have nothing beyond that to offer. And that is a poor representation of gay and transgender characters, and it kind of sucks that that's in here. I wish if Fantasy Flight had gone through the effort of including gay and transgender characters to actually flesh them out beyond sort of simple caricatures. That being said, not all is lost. There are a few characters that are semi-exceptions to that. There, For instance, one of the first two people you meet are a gay couple. There is a gay wedding at one point for them. They are fleshed out pretty well. You do learn quite a bit about those characters since you start the adventure with them, and they follow you pretty much throughout the entire game. And luckily, their characters aren't fully defined just by being gay. They are at least defined in other ways throughout the game. And that's good. I feel that is a very positive representation. There are other times, though, where Legacy of Dragonhall decides to point out a character as being transgender, regardless of you actually talking to them, and then acts as if it's some sort of dark secret. But this is a world where people don't care about that kind of thing. So why is it a secret? Why, would it, why is it a problem? And that's sort of this weird sort of tonal shift, and why include that character? Why talk about them? Just to say that you have transgender characters in this world. You could just have one fully fleshed out one, and that would do much better than to have a whole bunch roaming around that we don't learn anything about, that we only know them by a na simple name and the fact that they're transgender. That is not fair nor a good representation of those types of characters. There are also some cool representations of other characters. For instance, there is a single father that you can meet at one point in Dragonhold Village, and he's relatively well-defined. Uh, he's sort of just defined by being a single father, but I would say he's a little bit more fleshed out than that. But I do wish they went just a little bit deeper with that character. But generally speaking, he is relatively well fleshed out. And so your time in Dragonhold Village will be filled with sort of side quest stories that kind of, some of them don't really go much of anywhere, which is kind of unfortunate. There's some mysterious ones that kind of, that you get something and then that's it. They kind of peter off and I've never found any sort of end for them. There are several love interests that you can pursue and of course there are larger, bigger main story quests and also sort of big side quests that you can go on. And those are generally pretty cool. You know, you have to go off and go into a mine, fight off a goblin tribe, or go into a crypt. But the really cool thing about Legacy of Dragon Hall, and I do find this part to be really cool, is that a lot of all of these quests and sort of the people you encounter and everything, you can always at any point basically choose to just ignore all of it. You do not have to follow the main quest. You can pretend and just do nothing. You can try to find those side quests and ignore them, or you can actually go on them. That part is cool. Generally, in sort of a Telltale Adventure game, you are basically pushed along, and you have no choice but to go along with the story. Legacy of Dragon Hall at least takes that system just a slight bit farther and allows you to kind of go off the rails. It's just unfortunate that not everything is fleshed out quite enough. 
And I know people watching this review are probably going to be like, well, that's a lot of pressure to just put on what's simply a choose-your-own-adventure game. I'm like, okay, sure, it is kind of a lot of pressure. But let's be honest, board games don't exist in just a sort of bubble. There are many other forms of entertainment to occupy our time these days, and so a story that's only half-baked is unfortunately not one that I really want to keep going with or really sort of remember. And especially since it costs around $60, that's just a lot to ask for a half-baked story. And so that's really why I kind of have to end this review sort of mixed. I really can't recommend the game just because of price and that the story isn't all that interesting. And this is really a story game. So story is really the most important aspect of it. But on the other hand, I did have fun with this game. I do think the system works. I think it has a lot of potential to be really great. It's just after some thought, it really was sort of a shallow adventure. It was fun while it lasted, but it's not going to leave sort of any lasting impression on me. And this is the kind of game where I really do want a lasting impression. When I played The Walking Dead and I finished all five episodes, that left a lasting impression. I still remember many, many moments from that game because it is so impactful. The story shines through that game. The characters shine half the time and they leave a lasting impression on you. Legacy of Dragon Halt, and of course any games that Fantasy Flight creates in using this system could do that. This is the kind of system that mimics and would work really well for a game to do something like that. If Fantasy Flight maybe focused on sort of a core set of three or four characters and then had a bunch of ancillary supporting characters that aren't as fleshed out as the main, this could work really well. Legacy of Dragon Hall is unfortunately not that game. It doesn't really push itself. It's kind of this very sort of generic fantasy romp. And if this game were maybe $40 or even $20, I would probably outright recommend it if it were $20. $40 I might be still a little iffy, but at $60 it's a much harder sell. But like I said, I think this system has a lot of potential and I think if Fantasy Flight can just push tier enough just a little tiny bit more out of this generic fantasy that it's already in and it's starting to with this game get just a little bit past that if it can go maybe one more step past that they could have a masterpiece on their hands for a game that will sell just completely out very easily that does it for this review i hope you enjoyed it if you did please remember to like subscribe and leave a comment below if you really enjoyed this review, then feel free to leave a Patreon donation once my pages come live, and I will see you next game night. Bye!